Lectern, 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 Lectern. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, one, two. Can you hear me? Or can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you, is the sound here? Yes, the sound here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the community theater. We should uh, get started now, but um, I haven't met the speaker yet. So if we have Marcus and Jonas here, please step forward. Yeah, yeah. If I can play my, plug my computer. Yes. Sure. So what do you need? Uh, HDMI or uh, US, uh, Thunderbolt 3? Or, yeah, USB-C. Yeah, it's a little. Yeah, this one. Do you have, uh, like, the... Do you have the connections there? Yeah, I and mean, I need a USB-C. Perfect. Uh, oh, there. Yeah. Yeah, so this one, and... Uh, is, it, is that an HDMI? Yes. On that machine, Tishana. Can you guys just put a microphone on you? Yeah. yeah. Can I put this uh, here? Put it on top. Sounds great. Do you have any kind of video or any sound on your presentation? No. Nope. All right. Cool. Just put this in your pocket, sir. Yes. And uh, if you need a clicker, what's here? No, no, that's okay. Thanks. So please welcome Jonas and Marcus. Play with the Docker inside out. Okay, okay. cool. Thank you. I don't know if yeah, it's now it's working. So uh, before we start, uh, how many of you you use Play with Docker or know what's Play with Docker? Okay, lots of people. That's amazing. <laughs> well, it, it didn't used to be like that uh, in a few months ago, so uh, yeah. that's really nice. Uh, we'll wait a few seconds until we can start. So the idea of what we're going to talk today is basically, uh, since lots of people are using Play with Docker already, we want like really 
uh, show the basic stuff. And what we're going to show is mainly, or focus mainly on what we've been uh, working on in the last few months, and like the all new additions that uh, we basically deployed. And uh, we'll, we'll focus on a specific new feature that I guess uh, is really exciting, which is basically the, uh, hi the hybrid approach. So uh, ba using Play with Docker uh, uh, to actually work with uh, Linux and Windows on the same time, uh, like the hybrid approach. And we'll talk about how we did it. And, uh, and then like uh, what you should expect uh, next in the few months, in the next few months. And uh, I guess we'll start very soon. Really <laughs> Sorry about this. But uh, I don't see it yet. Um, we're trying to get the computer. Si no, oh, it should work. Maybe they need to switch something on the, on the RAM. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm Jonathan. Hello, everyone. My name is Marcos. I'm Jonas, Jonas' friend. And um, as Jonas said, uh, I pretty much already, or, or, uh, already all of you know what Play With Docker is, or almost all of you. But for those who don't know it, uh, Play With Docker is like the biggest honeypot out there in the web, basically. So, yeah, it's a funny story because, uh, as you might know, uh, Play With Docker runs Docker in Docker, basically. And to, at this moment to run that, you need to run privileged containers with a root user. So basically, many of you, I'm sure, try to like mount like the, the host uh, device or try to mess up with the profile system and stuff like that. And you can, you can actually do it. So we learned a lot during the way. And we are applying a lot of LSM uh, approaches in order to prevent you to do nasty stuff in there, like mining bitcoins or uh, running so now, bot botnets or stuff like that. Now they will yeah. get it as a challenge, man. Yeah. You okay. should have said that. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, uh, anyway, Docker, it's like uh, the Docker playground and uh, just uh, an interactive way to, to try Docker and uh, we have some news for you in this session. Yeah, so, okay, so what's new in Play With Docker? What basically changed from the last time that we talked about it, last DockerCon? Uh, you can actually fi uh, do file uploads, so you can just drag and drop any file to your uh, uh, instance and it will upload it immediately. Um, there is, we talked about last time, but uh, we want to implement templated sessions. So basically you get a new session and you want like a, I don't know, a full blown five node uh, swarm doing with containers running already and everything. So this is implemented already. We'll show it to you. Uh, we, we, some of you asked for like a, a, okay, the browser is really nice, but I want to be able to actually use my terminal because I like more the terminal. We like better terminal. So uh, we actually uh, made it so you can access through SSH. So it's almost, it feels almost like you are actually running on a real VM, but it's actually a Docker in Docker container. And so we decided that we, we should move away from reCAPTCHA because it, it's, it's actually not nice. And uh, we decided, okay, maybe like the best, we actually asked the community and Basically, we agree that the best thing is to just use uh, OpenID so you can log in with any provider uh, that we currently support. And we won't ask you to log in again unless you uh, delete your cookies or something like that. And, and we can hunt you down if you do messy stuff right now because we know who you are. We, ha we have your email address. <laughs> um, so we moved all our infrastructure from AWS to Azure. This is not a feature, but uh, we just wanted you to know. And um, we learned a lot about Azure in the way. Yeah. Lots of funny things happening in there with the scale sets. So if you are an Azure expert, we would like to talk to you because we have a really good stories, especially if you hit like quotas when trying to scale up. Funny things may happen there. And uh, Windows containers. So let's jump into like seeing all these things. Okay, so let's do a quick uh, demo of. Uh, the new features. So I have like the regular play playground here. I'm going to create an instance as, as you already know. So I have my, my instance here. So the first thing that I would like to show you, many of you requested that we can actually uh, upload files. Like for instance, I'm uh, developing my, my, in my own uh, compose file in my computer. So basically what I can do is just, I can do drag and drop here. Let me just, as you can see, let me upload it again so you can see it better. I just drop the file on the terminal. It's uploading the file. So if I do NLS, I have the file there, right? So you don't need to open up Vim and then do copy and pasting, pasting weirdness. 
just upload the file and you, yeah, you get it running right away. You can do Docker Compose uh, deploy. It's pretty easy, pretty easy as it is. Uh, templated sessions. That is not something that we are using in this specific, uh, specific playground, but the, the API, uh, for those who don't know, Play with Docker has an open API, basically. So you, you have an SDK that you can actually use to launch your stuff in here if you want. And you can also, like, say, okay, I want, like, a five node swarm with uh, two managers or uh, three managers, sorry, or five managers and two workers. And you can actually customize what is going to happen if uh, you're going to create the nodes and then you can actually run stuff in there like deploy this application or this other stuff or whatever you prefer. Uh, SSH access, uh, that is something that we already showcased in the last DockerCon. So you have the, there's a Docker machine driver that you can actually use to, to spawn instances. There's nothing new in there. OpenID, uh, if you go to training.playwithdocker.com, which is the training site of interactive tutorials, which is powered by the Play with Docker API. Then you're going to see that uh, it should ask you for your Docker login. See, you have this login to access button, uh, what Jonas was telling you about. And now, basically, you enter your Docker credentials, and you should get a terminal, right, to follow the interactive tutorial. So if I click here, then my command is going to execute on the terminal, and then I can follow the steps and do all the advanced and basic uh, trainings. And if you, if you go to the next uh, tutorial, it won't ask you to log in again because you're already logged yeah, in. Yeah, you're already logged in and we set a cookie like forever basically so you don't have to enter any more recaptchas or any crazy stuff that I know that you hate, especially the, the Google, you know, like streets and cars yeah. and signs. Let's uh, prevent giving information to Google anymore. And uh, Windows containers, which we, we believe is like the, the major uh, release that we did uh, last time. And... Um, I'm going to showcase it a little bit, and then Jonas is going to tell us the challenges behind this. So basically, you have this, this uh, slider here that you can switch, and we wanted to give the same experience. So you click, you, you click Add New Instance, and in a matter of seconds, you get a Windows container box ready for you to play in your playground. So if you do Docker version, you're going to see that we are running a 17.06 uh, EE version with, because it's the version that comes with a... Docker basically for Windows. And the hardest part of all of this, because as you might know, uh, Linux containers are Linux uh, Docker in Docker containers, which are basically containerized. But I can actually do Docker Swarm in it, uh, basically the same way that I would do it with any uh, environment. I can just copy, oh, trackpad. I can just copy this uh, thing, this token. And I should be able to paste it here. And if the demo gods are with us and we don't have a Lego thing here, as you can see, let me see if it pastes it correctly. One funny thing that happens is that whenever you join uh, a Windows machine into a swarm, it will, uh, like, uh, let me see if I can paste it here. Yeah, it just adds, like, a break line. It will... Uh, uh, do like a network flip, and that is something that we are trying to fix, but it's not really up to us. So, uh, let me see. Yeah, should work. I think there it goes, yeah. So as you can see, now my, my node join as a swarm worker, right? So I have like a hybrid swarm in play with Docker, and if I do Docker node less, right here, if this gives yeah. me my terminal back and the internet connection helps us. Let me try refreshing the screen. There. So if we do Docker node LS, you're going to see that we have two nodes, a Windows and a Linux node, and we can actually deploy hybrid applications and try stuff. Uh, so let's go to the next slide, and then we're gonna, I'm going to show you more Windows, Windows stuff. So what were the challenges to actually do uh, Windows uh, and, and Linux containers. Uh, the first thing we wanted to be as fast as Docker in Docker. So we really wanted you to be able to just click, get a new uh, Windows machine as fast as a Docker in Docker mach uh, machine like instance. So that was one, one of the first challenges. We wanted to be feature complete, which means that you can uh, drag and drop uh, files to the Windows instances too, and it works. You can upload like files. And uh, for you who played already with Play with Docker, you know that if you like run a, a expose like a, a port with a container, 
uh, you'll see like a small badge uh, with your port that you just exposed. When you know, click there, you can actually go to the application. So you get routed to the application. So the same thing happens uh, on Windows. So you ba it's basically like fully featured. Like you won't miss anything on the Windows side. Yeah, so let me try to do that really quick. So if I am do, uh, you already have, uh, I'm sure that you must be thinking, okay, but Windows images are really big. Like can someone says uh, several gigabytes. You already have pre-pulled a lot of images. So you have like uh, Windows Core, Nano Server, IIS. So we're going to try to do Docker run, dash D. We're going to export uh, 8080, IIS. So this is like the standard internet information uh, server container. And you're going to see that in a couple of seconds, my container is going to start. And you're going to see like the traditional play with Docker batch at the top. And you will be able to access your uh, IIS uh, without any problems. So until this starts, uh, let's tell you more about like the real challenges behind this to make it happen. Yeah. So it, in order to be able to, to do it, we had to actually. Uh, so since uh, the Linux instances work as Docker in Docker uh, containers, uh, and the Windows uh, instances are actually real VMs, what we need to do is to be able to somehow uh, make them work. Uh, and, and see each other in the networking layer, right? On the networking level. So um, our first challenge, what we want to do is, OK, let's try like how we make it, how, how they actually see each other, right? Because it's uh, Docker and Docker containers, and then like Windows VMs, and, and they cannot really talk to each other. So we tried with a, with a VPN, our first approach. OK, let's just like create a weird VPN between like Windows and the Docker and Docker containers. And we discovered that uh, you, like we shouldn't really touch the Windows VM for anything because um, uh, how the networking works with Docker on Windows, it, it's, it's really like uh, hard to, to deal with and change and, and do something like very custom. So our approach at the end was, okay, let's not touch the Windows VM at all. Let's do everything on the Linux side somehow. So we, did, we didn't really know how to do it. And we came up with a, with a solution that looks something like this. It's really hard and messy, but the nice thing is that you don't need to do it. Like we did it already for the Play with Docker, so you don't need to deal with that. And it's a very custom solution that works for us, and it's probably not uh, the nicest solution in the world. Basically, what we're doing is we are giving to every Docker in Docker host um, several IP addresses, okay, that are reachable in the network, and. Um, Whenever you add a VM, like an Excel, v Excel VM, like a Windows VM to the session, what we're doing is uh, creating a, a sort like a set of IP tables, and we are lying to the uh, Windows VM and telling, telling the Windows VM that whenever it wants to reach a certain IP address, it needs to get routed to a specific container inside your session. Okay? So we are reusing the host level IP addresses for different containers depending on the session that you are uh, working on. And in order to deal uh, with that in a nicer way, because it's creating lots of uh, IP addresses and assigning IP addresses and all these things, um, we created a Docker uh, networking plugin, a custom networking plugin, and a custom IPAM plugin. So we can uh, assign it and like, basically listen to all the events that happens on the Docker engine and, and be able to do all these things uh, in a nicer way, right? And not like totally manual. So that's on the networking level. Let me see if my container already started. Should have started. So as you can see, the container just already started, IAS. So if I click here, if the demo gods are with us again, I should be getting my IAS thing like I do with the uh, basically Apache or Tomcat C. So I, got, I have IAS running in play with Docker. And you can actually deploy hybrid services. So you, you can deploy like a Java app uh, talking to a SQL server or like IAS talking to MySQL or whatever you prefer. Then uh, the, the other challenge was actually the terminal. So at first, we, we, we tried to, to create like a container and, and to give you the terminal, and then like a SSH to the Windows uh, uh, machine uh, running there like open SSH, but it wasn't working really nice, PowerShell and all the things behind all these things. So yeah, if, if you are, uh, yeah. sorry to interrupt, but if you are following like the Windows open source, Windows is really pushing, uh, Microsoft, sorry, is really pushing hard on open source regarding SSH and PowerShell remote through SSH. So if you are, you are in a Linux box and you want to connect to a Windows machine, you have like different options. But they don't really quite work in all cases. So for basic commands, it's OK. But in Play with Docker, you can do stuff like, for instance, 
uh, you can copy and paste like uh, PowerShell snippets and it will work and you have like editors like uh, nano so you can open up nano and you can sh start editing files in here through a terminal and you, then you can save stuff and you send keystrokes to s save the like uh, whatever file you're working on see so I have my editor and then I can save stuff and it works pretty well but it didn't work using these two first approaches so we tried Windows SSH, native SSH client on, on, on Linux and Windows on the other side and in terminal just it's, it's a little bit funky and slow. We tried P PowerShell with remote SSH protocol remoting and it also had some issues regarding copying and pasting and uh, we ended up with a custom Node.js uh, solution basically. Yeah, based on Node PTI. Uh, based on uh, Node PDY which is a project that actually uh, a, a allows terminal communication uh, through a Node.js process. Yeah. Okay, so uh, just really fast, uh, we have a few open questions that uh, if you have like an answer, we'd love to hear opinions. Uh, we were thinking about maybe trying to use the nested virtualization on, on Azure and we are, we'll rework the all front end so it's nicer. And w soon you'll be able to spawn your own Linux uh, instances with like specifying your, your uh, images. We are going to add a collaborative file editor and since we know that there are like people everywhere in the world using it, will be like multi-region so it's faster for you and lower latency. Yeah, for, for people who are in China, we're actually uh, talking to Docker to deploy Play With Docker in AliCloud. So if you're in China, you're going to be able to access Play With Docker without any VPNs or weird stuff. And the timer will go away. Like yeah, we're going to remove the timer because we know it stresses out a lot of people. Uh, but uh, that is going away and uh, before closing the presentation, uh, there's a uh, hands-on hands -on lab sections down there uh, wh where you can basically follow interactive tutorials and uh, Docker EE stuff and all of that is based on Play With Docker. Uh, basically we made a custom UI around it using the SDK but if you go there and try the labs you're going to see how powerful you can get with this. You can actually get a, like a complete Docker EE environment just in a matter of seconds at just getting started with it. Okay. And uh, Play With Docker is open, open source so if you want to deploy your own Play With Docker in your organization for like internal trainings or whatever you want, you can do it. Just grab the, the code and run it. Uh, and if you want to contribute, like making it better, please reach to us or open an issue and we'll be more than happy to, to work with you guys. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs>